Hello and welcome to VTC's AutoCAD 2005 for Architects training tutorial. My name is Ivanhoe Tejeda and this tutorial is a continuation of my previous VTC title, AutoCAD 2004 for Architects. The goal of this tutorial is to cover advanced 2D topics and beginning 3D topics as they relate to the use of AutoCAD in an architectural environment. Topics from the previous title will be reviewed and reinforced. In other words, the foundation for basic drawing skills will not be provided in detail, but rather I will use the previously presented skills to build upon and move forward in the understanding and implementation of 2D and 3D AutoCAD. I will also discuss the use of raster editing software with AutoCAD to produce presentation style drawings. AutoCAD offers many options as you are aware of by now. I will focus on information relevant to your output of working drawings and presentation drawings. The drawings you are currently viewing represent the possibilities available for you upon completion of this tutorial. Once again, this is a continuation of AutoCAD concepts. It is intended for intermediate to advanced level users. This tutorial is not intended for beginning level users. For that, I recommend the previous title. The AutoCAD graphic user interface, the GUI, has not changed much from the previous release. In this tutorial, I will discuss methods to customize this interface to better serve the needs of the user. The topics that will be presented relate more to CAD management skills than to drawing skills in terms of customization. But when they're integrated properly, it allows the user to become more efficient and comfortable while using AutoCAD to create architectural drawings. For previous users, you can select Help from the pull-down menu and go to the New Features Workshop. Here AutoCAD has provided some animations, some tutorials that explain some of the changes made to AutoCAD in this current version. You can, for example, select Drafting Tools, and in Drafting Tools we can select Trim a Hatch, and AutoCAD explains some of the changes or additions to this feature. Closing out of that. We'll also talk about customizing the tool palettes. I'll open this up. Allow me to zoom in to this area and show you the benefits of using the tool palettes and then also of customizing. First I need to turn off some layers that are not necessary. And then I will select for example a solid hatch. Clicking and dragging it into place allows for an instant hatch. Once again clicking and dragging brings it in. I can also go to some sample office furniture and let's take this chair for example. Not necessarily a good place to place it but to show you how you can simply click and drag and bring some blocks in to the drawing file. I will show you how to create blocks and place them into the tool palettes. Closing that. Finally, I have set the resolution on my screen to 800 by 600 pixels. I highly recommend that your screen resolution is set to 1024 by 768 so that you have a bigger drawing space and you have the option of adding more toolbars to the right, to the left, to the top, or to the bottom of the screen. 
Also, remember to keep an eye on the command line. It is the connection to AutoCAD. The prompts allow us to move forward and allow us to complete some of the tasks in order to create 2D models and 3D models. Architectural visualization in this tutorial means the ability to take your design ideas, draft them in AutoCAD, and present to your client. In the past, CAD drawings were printed and color was usually added by hand. We now have the ability to add color using raster editing programs. We can print that to paper, we can publish to the web, or we can transmit via email. I will touch on the use of Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop as these products relate to AutoCAD. I am glad to recommend VTC titles that deal specifically with the uses of Illustrator and Photoshop and will provide more in-depth coverage than I can in this tutorial. I'll discuss general topics directed to the use of some features enough to create 2D color presentations. For example, looking at this drawing file, I can select the plot option. I currently have a PostScript level 2 plotter selected. It will be plotting to a file. I will select the preview and as you can see here's our sheet of paper. If I zoom in a little closer, what was a vector based drawing becomes a raster based image. And what can I do with this raster based image once it is printed? For example, I can take that image into Photoshop. I can add color to it. And let me take you to an image that already has color added. Here's a floor plan created an EPS file from it and added some color in Photoshop and added some effects to that layer to create the drop shadow. I also added some background and this is in no way completed. It is just the beginnings of the possibilities. This is a site plan which shows the drive, some trees, and some text can also be added at a later date. This is an elevation. Color was added and some of the features in Photoshop were used to give it somewhat of a natural look. This is the image prior to receiving color in Photoshop. As you can see, currently the possibilities are unlimited and I highly recommend going to architectural websites, clicking on the gallery or the portfolio links to get a better understanding of 2D presentation drawings. I would like to take some time now to discuss the general similarities and differences of architectural firms. We will discuss a small firm size, a medium firm size, and a large firm size, and how CAD is used. Beginning with the small firm size, one to five individuals working on projects individually. This basically means that one person is working on one project at a time on one computer. These are small projects. It can be a new commercial project or a residential project. Networking is optional because each individual will have one project on one computer. This is not recommended though. At this point 
All computers should be networked so that you can share files. Next we have the medium sized firm. 6 to 20 individuals working on projects as teams. The number of 6 to 20 individuals may vary. There is no set definition for a medium sized firm. I am only using these numbers as a general point of discussion. 3 to 5 persons may be working on a project. The projects are small to medium size. It can be a new residential development, it can be a commercial development, or it can be a school or bank in the neighborhood. Networking at this point is extremely necessary because each team member will need to work on different files for each of these projects. And finally we have the large size firm. 21 or more individuals, and again, this number can vary. A large size firm can be 30 individuals or 50 individuals. And these individuals are working on projects as a team. They're either on the same floor or they occupy different floors of an office building, or they can be in one or more geographic locations, East Coast and West Coast offices. The team sizes vary very much like on a medium sized firm. The projects can be an urban development, it can be a high rise project, it could also be a corporate retail chain of stores in a regional location. The point is that you are now working again as a team, you are networking all of your systems so that the files may be accessible and at this point the files are residing on a server and you need all of this flexibility so that if an individual is on the East Coast and they need to share files with an individual on the West Coast, it will happen instantaneously instead of having to email files back and forth. The ideas I present in this tutorial are going to apply to a large size firm. They can be incorporated within a small size firm environment. The goal of an architectural firm is to produce quality drawings in an efficient, timely manner. The similarity between the three firm sizes is that they are all the individuals are using AutoCAD, they are all drawing, and they are all working on projects. The difference is on how you want to use AutoCAD. AutoCAD tends to lend itself to the team approach, and you never know when your firm may be expanding and when you may require to have more employees it is always better to be prepared to handle the needs of a large project. You never know when that would happen, but again, being networked, using a server, is always the best approach. And it's going to be my goal to reinforce the ideas of this team approach and the large firm size throughout this tutorial.